Uh, my name is Ibrahim Haddad. I am the exec director of the PyTorch Foundation, and I'm really thrilled to be here today to give you kind of a briefing on the project itself and what we're doing at the PyTorch Foundation since we welcomed the project uh, about a year ago. So the title of the presentation is One Year of Open Governance, since it is almost exactly one year uh, since September of uh, 2022 when we announced that the PyTorch project is transitioning to the Linux Foundation uh, from uh, Meta. Uh, before we get into this, uh, I will provide you with a little briefing on how to properly connect a USB <laughs> into <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so uh, that, that worked. Um, a little briefing about the project itself, because uh, it is really a fascinating project once you look into it uh, and you see the growth of its community and um, its deployment and its adoption across uh, various industries. So the project started in 2016, uh, and really uh, what kicked off the initial development on PyTorch was a frustration with previous technologies and few previous uh, existing uh, projects that did not allow fast prototyping, didn't have the existing functionality. Uh, so PyTorch was created from um, that need, uh, and it took about two years to become kind of a de facto driving factor in terms of bringing in contributions, thousands of developers, uh, thousands of contributions pouring into the project uh, around uh, 20, uh, 2018. By 2022, the project has gathered so much steam that it became the leading project used in research across academia all over the world. Uh, and actually, I will come back to that because uh, in a later slide, because academia is extremely important to PyTorch to the point that as part of the PyTorch Foundation, we dedicated a board seat uh, to have academia represented on the board. So that's how strong the connection is between academia and uh, the project. Uh, 2022, uh, um, a year later, PyTorch moved to the uh, Linux Foundation. This is a new era in terms of open governance. And I will discuss this a little bit in detail in the coming slides and looking into the future 2024. It's really a lot of opportunities. Uh, we have big plans and we're planning to kind of double down on everything we're doing this year and expand uh, going into the future. Uh, so a year ago, as I mentioned, uh, same month, actually, uh, we were on a uh, podium in Dublin at the Open Source Summit announcing that PyTorch is transitioning to the Linux Foundation. Uh, and this was really a monumental um, announcement just given the import importance of the project, and especially that the project was already successful and is already a successful project, has hundreds and thousands of contributors, uh, hundreds of thousands of projects depend on PyTorch as a dependency in GitHub. Uh, so it was really uh, a significant mark that uh, the project founder uh, and their uh, core partners, the basically the founding members of the PyTorch Foundation, as you see them on the screen, they got together and they decided to uh, proceed forward in hosting the project at the foundation uh, in a step to drive additional innovation uh, and additional development in the open source ecosystem and putting uh, PyTorch in a neutral environment will help accelerate um, that drive and uh, that innovation. Uh, so these uh, six organizations, as you see on the screen, are the founding member of the PyTorch Foundation, uh, and they were critical in um, moving the project into the Linux Foundation. And that transition is important uh, for two uh, different pieces. The first one is basically Meta and the PyTorch founders uh, from their perspective, this is a very important signal to the, to the market or to the industry in general of the importance of open source and their commitment to open source and open governance, even though the project is already under uh, OSI approved open source license and there's uh, uh, quite a bit of success around it. And from the Linux Foundation perspective, uh, this is a one step further in our continuous investment in the open source AI ecosystem. Uh, so for, I, I see some faces here that I recognize and they're aware of the LF AI and Data Foundation. So we already have an umbrella foundation at the LF uh, today that has uh, over 60 member organization. We host 55 technical projects and we've been investing in supporting that ecosystem uh, since 2018. Uh, we see a lot of opportunities or we saw a lot of opportunities in open source AI as early as 2017 and beginning 2018 we announced the new umbrella. And today, that specific community uh, aggregate since 2018 has over uh, 95,000 contributors into our project. And only in 2023, we had 23,000 uh, active contributors in the project. So for us, 
um, doubling down on the Pytorch Foundation in that sense and proceeding with the project and supporting it is just another step of what we typically do uh, for the projects that um, and the ecosystems under uh, the open source umbrella that we support. Uh, so one of the typical question that that is the occurrent uh, quite a bit is uh, on the governance side. And I have this slide kind of to clarify that a little bit. We have a, a complete separation between the project uh, governance, which is what we call technical governance, and the governance of the foundation itself. So when you think of technical governance, uh, this is the technical uh, senior committee of the project. It consists of the uh, lead maintainers of the project. Uh, these individuals are in that position because they are core committers, they are uh, highly skilled in uh, the competence required to drive contributions into the project. Uh, they have deep understanding of the project and basically uh, they have a specific uh, set of responsibilities uh, as part of that uh, participation. So this is the technical governance and there's a specific process for any individual who is uh, a contributor to the project on how they can build up their kind of portfolio of contributions uh, to drive to become uh, a, a maintainer or a lead committer um, uh, as part of the project. And the other aspect of the governance is what we call the foundation governance, which is the PyTorch Foundation. Uh, and um, in, you know, from my perspective, I see it as the funding body of the project, right? So the, 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 the foundation itself is a mechanism for us uh, to bring in funding that will help us spend on the project, whether it's uh, build infrastructure, a website, IT, events, et cetera. Uh, so companies come in, join the PyTorch Foundation, uh, they have a yearly membership that they, um, they participate in and they contribute to the foundation, and they participate in a flurry of activities focused on marketing, communication, um, uh, events, and other activities, uh, but there's no interference in how the project run on a daily basis from a technical perspective. Uh, and all of the efforts in the foundation are in support of the project, and I will uh, talk about this uh, in a little slide. Oh, actually, it's right here. So as part of the funding we have, we gather from uh, the foundation, that funding goes in support of the project. So we have dedicated resources uh, that are hired to support the PyTorch project in the foundation. Uh, so there's Kylie here, uh, as supporting the project from marketing and communication perspective. Uh, I support the project from as a GM. Uh, we have other resources as well dedicated to supporting the project. So now there, there are uh, resources that work for the, for the foundation dedicated in, in support of the project. Uh, we are now responsible as the PyTorch Foundation of creating the events of the project. Coming up, we have the PyTorch conference, but, and I will mention that in a later slide. But other than that, we have a lot of different webinars, we have video recordings, we have a lot of educational mater material um, uh, in terms of events that we put together in support of the project uh, to bring awareness and to help prepare the next generation of contributors, right, to, uh, provide education and bring in people and help them become contributors into the project. Uh, we have focused efforts in terms of marketing, uh, PR and communication, and you see that a lot from the pytorch.org. Uh, uh, so if you go to the uh, project's website, you will see a, a lot of different activities there in terms of um, whether it's announcements uh, in relation to training uh, or uh, new releases, um, meet the maintainers, interviews with developers, interviews with companies deploying. So there's really a lot of use cases uh, being made available. Uh, we have integrated the project with our internal Linux Foundation uh, LFX platform, which gives us a lot of services in terms of security audits, license compliance audits, project inside, understanding the population of developers, where they come from, which companies, which will help us better serve them as we see all these different statistics. And we have really a number of services that are now centralized in the foundation uh, for the project uh, in terms of training, legal support, IT infrastructure is a masterpiece just given how large the project is and the amount of IT and build system it, it requires. Uh, this is actually one of the <laughs> largest pieces uh, you see on the screen. Uh, and you know a, a number of other uh, services. So previously, if you are an open source project without such a foundation in support of it, all of these different pieces are being provided by different partners. Sometimes they're not, sometimes there's kind of disputes on who's gonna take care of what, the cost. Now all of these efforts are being abstracted. The, these services are available to the project and its community and it's provided by staff that are dedicated in support of the project. Um, so this is actually 
I went last night uh, on Twitter. I'm trying to <laughs> locate um, the, uh, the graph uh, because I have the statistics from one year uh, at, um, at the Linux Foundation. So I was able to grab it from Twitter. Uh, and when PyTorch uh, as a project joined the, uh, uh, the foundation, six months later, we posted this in terms of kind of tracking how the project is doing now that's part of the foundation. And you will see that across all metrics, and kind of the output of existing developers, uh, new developers entering the project, the number of commits, number of people following us on uh, various social media, number of um, uh, videos we're able to produce, and how many times these videos have been uh, shown. Across every single metric we track, we've seen an increase, and some of these increases are north of 35%, which is really incredible that within six months, we were able to support the project and help the project grow by that much. Um, by the way, all this information now is idealized. They're actually on the PyTorch website later on. But uh, So uh, it was really incredible progress within six months. And now when we look again and track all these different um, 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 metrics for 2023, they're even better. So across all these different metrics, and I don't show all of them here, just kind of the key ones, um, you know, how many repos on GitHub actually depend on PyTorch as a dependency? Over 600,000, which is really insane. I think this, this must be one of the top dependency across all of GitHub. Uh, the year over year growth in terms of a new repos um, being uh, in support of the project, uh, the number of research publications, the number of commits, number of developers. So it's been really uh, an amazing journey for the project and really for us as staff, a uh, great journey and <laughs> very exhaustive just given the amount of activities uh, across all facets of the project. And all of this really together is just an amazing indication that a neutral home for an open source project is really a great way to help the project grow and attract uh, new organizations to participate in the development and be the adopters of that specific technology. And we see that not just in PyTorch, but with every single project that you host in the foundation. And in parallel to this, and I'll give you a little um, side story here from LFA and Data. So in LFA and Data, which is kind of a sister organization to the PyTorch Foundation, we host 55 technical projects. We're growing one to two projects per month. And one of the things I love to do is when I want to talk to any given uh, company, I always go back to my portfolio of project and see, okay, let's say, I'm talking to Microsoft or I'm talking to IBM or Intel. I go and see what project these organizations are hosting with us. And I pull in the data from when that project joined us and then see the current set of data in terms of new contributors, number of commits, all these type of statistics. And for some of these projects, they've seen, you know, 800% increase in number of developers or number of commits or 900. You know, I've made a presentation a couple of weeks ago where most of the projects were in the range of five to 700% increase uh, just within 12 months of joining the foundation, which is kind of another data point in support of the hypothesis that when a project transitions to an open source uh, foundation, it has an open governance model, its IP and its assets now are managed by the foundation. The foundation staff manages uh, all the aspects of the project from the infrastructure to its legal, to its marketing and all the other pieces, there's really a lot of confidence being put in that project and organizations looking to adopt and participate in the project have much more confidence in saying, you know, this project is gonna be here in five years, regardless whether the founders of the project are here or not. And now this project is a foundation project and I as an organization, uh, I can feel confident in adopting this project and depending on it because I know there's a foundation uh, supporting it and backing it. So that's about the project. Uh, in terms of the PyTorch Foundation itself, uh, as I mentioned, we announced the foundation in uh, September of 2022, last year. And uh, it took us you know, six to seven months really to establish ourselves, create our internal infrastructure, create our uh, processes, our um, you, you know, working models inter internally. Uh, and then we updated our charter to start welcoming new organizations into the foundation. So we have um, similar to many of the Umbrella Foundations at the LF, uh, we have different levels of membership. Uh, we have the premier level of membership for board member, general membership for any other organizations uh, that doesn't want to join at the board level. And then we have a specific uh, level of membership dedicated for 
uh, educational or academic institution. And this one is actually um, free of charge. There are no fees for universities to join us. And also they get a board seat, which is really incredible. Uh, so since we opened up the membership in June, we've had uh, these four organizations join the foundation, IBM, Intel, and Hugging Face uh, join the at the board level, uh, GraphCore as a general member. Uh, and we have a number of other uh, members that we are actually in the process of onboarding into the foundation. And one interesting story about the, um, um, the relation between the project PyTorch and the academia is that we've received, uh, you know, once we opened up the membership, we've received hundreds, like literally hundreds of applications. And when we started vetting them, and it's really overwhelming, a lot of these are actually coming from individuals right, who are professors at universities or their uh, lab heads uh, at different R&D institutions or even, you know, PhD students. That tells you kind of the kind of the relation between, you know, and the use of PyTorch in academia. So now we're actually in the process of uh, putting together a specific programs uh, that is uh, a membership for individuals. So let's say you're a PhD student, you're a professor, and so on, and you would like to become a member of the foundation and have that association. So we're kind of tailoring a specific program for them uh, with specific set of benefits that we're uh, aiming to um, launch next year. So if you're uh, in, the, uh, in the audience here, you're interested in learning more about the membership, please grab me after uh, this talk. Uh, so uh, back into the project, uh, one of the major milestones of uh, PyTorch was PyTorch 2.0. So for the past uh, year plus, there has been a lot of development on PyTorch 1, you know, 1.1, all the way to PyTorch 1.15 or 1.14. And then PyTorch 2.0 kind of blew all the expectations out of the water uh, in a sense where there's almost a guarantee of 50% performance, additional performance or more depending on the specific deployment. Uh, so PyTorch 2.0 was released in uh, March 2023. There has been really a lot of coverage for that. Uh, massive improvement in not just new functionalities, but increased performance in existing functionalities. Uh, and really within a couple months, we've seen um, uh, most of the major enterprises that we work with have transitioned you know, from 1.x uh, to 2.0. And you know, all the uh, media activities and marketing activities you know, here handled by Kylie has, on PyTorch 2.0, kept us busy for a couple months. Really uh, amazing reception and uh, massive amount of improvements uh, in the project. Uh, and actually during the uh, Dublin event when we announced the project, one of the questions that Jim Zemlin uh, asked me on stage was, was this going to be just PyTorch or is it gonna be like CNCF where you have like Kubernetes, but then you have these hundreds of tools and libraries and uh, different enabling technologies around it. And we are actually at that point where we're enabling an ecosystem of tools in support of uh, PyTorch project itself uh, for the goal of enabling and accelerating the uh, use, contribution, and adoption of PyTorch. Uh, so this year alone, we've welcomed so far 18 new tools uh, in, in support of that PyTorch ecosystem. Uh, and there are already over 100 projects that exist today in that library of tools uh, so if you know, if you're aware of um, Kubernetes and you're aware of the ecosystem, we're actually getting there. We have kind of the core project, which is PyTorch and over 100 different supporting tools and libraries uh, that helps organization bring in, uh, when they adopt PyTorch, bring in uh, a whole set of tools that will help them with their integration and uh, transition. Uh, and you know, y there are some tools here that were announced this year that you see on the screen, but for the full details, I would highly recommend going to the uh, URL on the screen which has the listing and you're able to kind of sort and search and all do all kind of um, lookups on the website. Uh, so th this is actually as thriving ecosystem as the PyTorch itself in terms of development and activities. Um, so how to get involved? Uh, there are really a number of ways uh, you can get involved. As an organization, you can join the foundation today. Uh, as I mentioned, we have uh, a number of levels at the foundation to help work on new organization. And if you're in uh, academia or university, um, there's a specific membership class for, uh, for universities that also allows for a board seat. Uh, so I, I would highly recommend starting there as an organization. Uh, as an individual or as someone who works for a company that uses PyTorch on a daily basis, one of the things we started doing is creating uh, PyTorch technical training. So our plan is set um, to create 
kind of uh, a number of these. We already have a certain uh, curriculum in mind, and we started with our first project, PyTorch in Practice, um, that you see on the screen, and we're offering 50% uh, discount on it. And again, you know, all the revenues from training, things like that, actually go in support of the project. So uh, any kind of sales uh, that we, we make on the training, it goes uh, into the PyTorch Foundation budget in support of the things like the uh, uh, PyTorch infrastructure and, and other items. Uh, so this is a great way for uh, individuals. Uh, and we're, we're aiming for a, um, for a certificate. So basically after achieving a certain number of classes, um, similar to how CNCF does their cloud native certificate. So we're, we're following the same model. Um, another way to get involved is to attend the events. So we have a number of uh, smaller events that we have in different geographies, but we also have uh, the anchor major event, uh, the PyTorch conference for 2023. And this is one of the uh, areas that uh, the Linux Foundation is um, transitioning. Basically, uh, previously Meta organized that conference and starting 2023, this event, the Linux Foundation is the organizer of the conference, and we've actually uh, exceeded the um, um, uh, the um, potentials of sponsorship. So we we've welcomed more sponsors than we anticipated. Uh, we actually had a cap of 400 registrations. We exceeded that, and then we had to create uh, and update our contract with the hotel to welcome up to 600, I think. Uh, so we opened up additional space for people who would like to uh, to attend the conference. Um, and uh, it's looking to be uh, an amazing conference. So we've, we've had uh, a number of speakers uh, keynoting uh, that are confirmed. And um, you know, if you love Linux Foundation events, you're gonna love that event because um, it's really uh, taking so much effort of everyone to make sure that we have the best ex PyTorch experience for everyone uh, attending. Uh, so that's another way is at attending the event, socializing with people, figuring out who's doing what and uh, exploring the different opportunities uh, that are made available there. In terms of 2024, we have kind of uh, an idea of where we wanna go, uh, basically five core uh, focus areas. The first one is developers. Uh, you know, how can we improve the developer journey with uh, PyTorch as a project? How can we provide better tooling for developers to be more efficient? How can we provide um, uh, and onboard the new developers into the project? How can we improve the, uh, the number of commits coming from existing developers? So there's this whole category of developer experience, right? A uh, second aspect of focus for 2024, which is the continuation of 2023, is training and certification. We started our first hands-on um, uh, course uh, for PyTorch. We're developing, I think, four or five different courses as well leading to a certification. So we haven't announced any of that yet. It's just kind of work in progress, just FYI for you to know that there's really uh, a big agenda there in terms of providing formal training for developers wanting to enter uh, the PyTorch ecosystem. Uh, we have a number of activities that we executed in 2023 uh, that we want to carry over for 2024, focused on you know, marketing and events. We've had a number of different uh, smaller PyTorch events that were very successful in different geographies. So we're planning to do that more in 2024 and of course continue building up uh, the main conference, the PyTorch uh, conference in 2024. Uh, in relation to academia, as I mentioned uh, a little bit earlier, we're planning a specific uh, membership class for uh, academicians so they can join as an individual with a specific set of benefits such as, you know, uh, heavy discounts on, on training, uh, free entrance to the PyTorch events, uh, et cetera. Uh, and uh, we are expanding in terms of uh, setting up mentorship programs through our LFX platform and different uh, areas that are of interest uh, or intersection as well between academia and the project itself. And lastly, uh, we would like to expand uh, enterprise adoption. So we have different programs in, in support of, of this goal that we will kick off uh, in 2024. Uh, so as you can see, it's like um, it's 2024 looking very good in terms of you know prospect and especially uh, taking the momentum from 2023 and continuing and building on it uh, for 2024. Uh, so it's been really an, an amazing uh, year for us at the PyTorch Foundation. We had the opportunity to work with the who's who in uh, in AI in terms of developers. We met really amazing people in terms of organizations. Um, and you know, 
we are here to, to help and enable and support the developers and their project, similarly to what every other Umbrella Foundation at the LF is doing. Um, so this is kind of dedicated to PyTorch, but here I'm kind of spinning off uh, in a different direction. So if any of you here is uh, focused in their organization on any given open source uh, project that uh, they would consider uh, for hosting any foundation, this would be kind of a great way. This is a great example where you have, you know, the, the top tech companies brought in such an amazing project and even such an amazing project, so over 35% increase in commits and contribution and new developers. So imagine what could that do for other projects. Uh, so that's all what I had for today. Uh, thank you very much for attending and I, I'm happy to take any questions you may have. Thank you. Yeah, so Google Cloud is a founding member uh, of the um, PyTorch Foundation, and a lot of people have similar questions. It says, you know, doesn't Google have Tensor, and, you know, why is that? And I think, uh, to be very objective on this question, Google Cloud, as a business, they want to do what their customer asks them. So if they have customers, they're asking them, you know, I want PyTorch support in, in your cloud, you know, PyTorch uh, Cloud, as, as a business uh, division, they want to go and do that. So there's, I believe there are, um, you know, different camps within Google, a, a camp that is focused completely on TensorFlow and all its ecosystem and derivative tooling and, and supporting technologies. And there's also a camp that sees opportunities in other projects as well, even though they're competing or coming from competing organizations, and they want to support that because it drives more business to them. So enabling more revenue streams really is, is the key here. Like I said, I think it's Okay, <laughs> did I pass? Okay. <laughs> What's the hard question then? <laughs> or I'll, I'm gonna yeah, regret that question. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. So we, we go a long way back, so he's going easy on me. <laughs> yes, Max. One or two things that you would have planned now that you have your new and bigger plan? Uh, we were actually just talking about this, Kylie and, and myself, uh, in the morning we showed up at the registration desk and I think the one thing I would change like if I just let's talk about one is just resourcing really? resourcing uh, so typically um, when we spin off a new umbrella we're not gonna hire too many people right we just start with a very small core team and figure out you know the actual needs of the umbrella foundation and and, and the members and the project and grow from there kind of incrementally with PyTorch, it was really an avalanche of activities from day one, where you know we're working with you know Meta, um, uh, Google, Microsoft, Nvidia. You know these are all large, massive organizations um, where resources are available, and you know there is an endless supply of money. You know virtual in, in the sense that you want, you have a need, you can, you're able to kind of uh, fill it up. In our case, it was like, wow, like we're working with all these companies, there's so much work to be done. And um, so I think resourcing is a kind of uh, an area where from day one we realized, you know, we need more people on deck. And we were actively actually looking and, and hiring. And uh, so today we have, um, you know, a dedicated technical um, or a de uh, the technical PM. Um, who's dedicated for the project. She's actually a practitioner. She's doing her PhD in AI. So she's been using PyTorch for five, six years now. She's, so she's top notch in, in the space. We have um, Kylie focusing on communication. We have a uh, uh, senior marketer focusing on all the marketing programs and focusing on other things. Uh, and we're able to tap into the Linux Foundation resources for all of these. But I think the other way to, to answer your question is, you know, what were the things that worked really well? Right, kind of uh, in, in a different way. Um, so certainly there was a, a very strong will from the founder of the project and all the kind of the core contributors that you know there is a need for us to, uh, if you want to grow that project and make it kind of the de facto standard in, in its own category, we need a way to put it in the foundation and so on. So I think from day one there was this 
will and intention that we're doing this for that purpose, right? And that made things easy as, as we went along because everybody's there with a common goal, not competing goals for bringing the project into foundation. Everybody, all these six companies, and of course the Linux Foundation as, as kind of uh, integral party to that, everybody wanted to make sure that PyTorch not just continues to be successful, but becomes even more successful and grows its community and become kind of the dominant uh, machine learning framework or library um, in this space. And we're getting there. I mean, all the statistics are point. Even w one exercise I did, but I didn't include it here, is if you go to Google Trend, right, and you, you put in PyTorch and let's say you put in TensorFlow just to, to follow up on Jeff's question, right, you will see that like, you know, TensorFlow is here and PyTorch is up there, right? For the past 24 months, or I mean, for, for the past, you know, you can pull up like five years and then just see the past year, and you can see the difference. Uh, so, um, so everybody kind of were lining up on the same goal that you know we want this to be successful. And I, I think uh, where some of the, um, you know, they say the devil is in the details, and, and this is where kind of things got, you know, how to move this, how to transition that, but that's kind of logistics. But I think I think the the core thing is more more it's not a usual project like so you got a linux foundation bump uh you know in terms of the trend and of course you joined the linux foundation yeah bump. yeah so there and, and this is very typical for a lot of the project and i like i think you know i made um the past couple of months i've been talking to a lot of companies hosting projects with us and you know one of the things they ask is how our projects are doing i mean they, they know how the projects are doing from their perspective but we can go back to our internal platform and pull up all the all these data that I showed examples. So a lot of the project are 400, 500 percent more in terms of you know. So what that means is for every project you're putting from IBM into the AF 360, you're getting like four other resources, right? And some projects are th we had a few projects, maybe like four or five, that are 800, 900 percent increase in commits and contributors, uh, which is just fascinating. Uh, so there's that continuous. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, to the first two points that Jeff mentioned, because they relate, um, you know, one of the, you know, I, I worked for Samsung for six years, okay, and um, I, I was part of the kind of committee that decides what technology should we adopt for any given product line, and, you know, my focus was kind of open source. So, so when you think of companies like that, there's, um, there's a difference between open source and open governance, uh, in a sense where, um, you know, PyTorch was always, has always been open source, but it wasn't open governance. Uh, the same thing for the other project, like Android may be open source, but it's not open governance. And we at Samsung, we had, for every commit we had to do, for every phone we need to ship, we need to go get somebody's approval in Google. It's not open governance, you know? Uh, and they can stop our shipment, you know? So, so open governance is extremely important because it gives a signal to other companies that, hey, this is not controlled by a given company. Um, there's a path for you as a contributor to become on that table that we call the technical steering committee or whatever, every project calls it differently. And that provides massive uh, amount of confidence that me as IBM or Microsoft or, I, or any other company, I can have faith in that project and that I can build on top of it and not be concerned what's gonna happen to it two or three years in the future. And I think this is the, the major value. Um, so right now, I'm kind of split. Uh, th there's no hard percentage. I mean, it's ne you need to do what needs to be done. So there's no. So I'm I'm kind of dedicated uh, to the AI portfolio at DLF, and that 
compromises LFA and data PyTorch. And there are other two couple projects that are hosted at the uh, Linux Foundation level that we're, we're gonna pull in eventually and consolidate everything. So that basically leaves us with PyTorch and LFA and data. Uh, so most of the staff dedicated to either of these, they're exclusive on these, meaning, you know, there's, you know, Kylie, myself, Jen, et cetera, et cetera. We're either serving this or that because it's the same domain. Uh, some of the people have expertise in AI as, as practitioners or data scientists and so on. So, uh, so, so at this point, we're, conti we're continuing as we are. Uh, there are no plans on, I don't know if you're hinting into a consolidation between the two. Uh, it, it, um, Yeah, this this is this this is uh, kind of very true assessment, and I think um, where I would differ in opinions with you is that at some point uh, we're going to need a separate person for either of the umbrellas, just because of the nature of work and um, the amount of work actually that is involved. Uh, <laughs> I was having a discussion this morning, and, and I was saying, you know, sometimes I go to the office in the morning and I order lunch and I order dinner because I'm like. You know, I work from a, an actual office. You know, so so I, I don't have the I don't go to the kitchen and like from home from work, uh, work from home. So I think it goes to the genesis where the founders of the PyTorch Foundation, uh, you know, PyTorch wa was and is in a different space than all the other portfolio of projects that we have in LFA and data. It has different needs. It has different requirements. It has different type of community. Uh, its adoption is very different than everybody else. So the the founders of the PyTorch Foundation didn't didn't feel that it's a good fit for PyTorch to be there because it deserves its own foundation given its status and so on. And actually, at the beginning, I was, I was, I had my doubts about this. I'm like, you know, it's just another project. But, and you know, we, ha we host Onyx, we host Orovod. These are like 10, 15,000 GitHub stores. There's like explosion of activities. But then once we started getting involved in PyTorch, okay, this is another level, okay? It's, you know, it's like, you know, LFAI and data here in terms of project activities and that thing is over here. Uh, there are periods of time where you, you like for two days straight, you're just focused on PyTorch and everything that's happening there. So I think um, the split was intentional for a good reason. Um, and I, ideally it should be all folded under one, but I think the future will will decide how these, how these, how these will work. Um, in terms of resourcing, I think eventually there has to be some more focus because LFA and data is going like crazy. Uh, we just added like 10 members in the past couple months. We've, we're adding almost two projects a month. Um, our developer community, I mean, if you think in the number of projects, if every project, if you know, have the project, have a request every week, then you're done. Your time is gone because you need to fulfill the request of the project. You need the different committees you need to manage. You need to prepare the agendas, the decks, that, 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 and then you're, you're gone. So I think um, going back kind of to Max's point, the resourcing is kind of um, one of the challenges. <laughs> and Kylie's and everybody. <laughs> so. Yeah, so uh, so as a background to what Jeff was mentioning, we have OpenSSF and they're looking into security of models and other artifacts in AI. And we in LFA and data, we have a committee called ML Security, uh, ML SecOp, I think. And 
you know, they're focused on the <laughs> reverse aspect of security and AI. So they're, we're setting up a collaboration together, and I think uh, we're going to have an announcement later this week. I'm not sure if it's tomorrow or the day after, but basically we're launching uh, the generative AI commons and focused on generative technologies and LLMs or, or, or models in general under which you have large language models, small and whatever. Um, and part of one of the uh, work stream that uh, the committee f decided on what they're going to focus on is security. So there's going to be actually um, more interaction across a, a kind of a different set of companies working on security and AI. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, please. So for, for feedback on code, it's all on GitHub issues, right? But then for general discussion, there's um, a discussion forum. Are you aware of it? Um, I don't know the address of it. Okay, so. Um, so that, you can send me an email and I can follow up with you. I know that there are, are we doing case um, case studies with other like successful adoption? I think that that would be a great idea. So there are companies that deploy and they want to share their experience, and they say, you know, this is how we used it in what context. And, and they talk about their, you know, and all of that should be available on the website. And actually, uh, and that's why I started with code because once we launched the foundation in September of last year, within days, I had so many questions from different companies in LFA and data using PyTorch, like, hey, you know, we, we would like to talk with the maintainer if you can arrange kind of, and I'm like, I talked to the maintainer, it's like, no, just send them to GitHub. You know, <laughs> so like, you know, if it's Git, it's code, just GitHub issues. You can just create an issue, um, uh, you know, open an issue and then um, tag it with whatever topic um, and, and then it gets assigned accordingly. Yeah. Okay, thank you. 